Two weeks ago, a California man was in court facing justice for the murder of his wife. He was not your usual suspect, a family man and a devoted Jehovah's Witness who preached the word of God door to door. So was he guilty or were police guilty of pursuing the wrong man? You decide as Jim Avila tells what happened to the preacher's wife. Master bedroom, bathroom, master bedroom bed, blood stain on the pillow. A spring morning, police rummage through what's been reported as a home invasion. The peaceful, pious world of Jehovah's Witness minister Kelly Jarka, his wife Isabel, and their two children, now a frantic mess. Their upscale home in the faraway Los Angeles suburb of Marietta is now filled with disheveled drawers, ransacked cabinets, and more. 911, what is your emergency? Hello? Yes, can we put in a battery? You were just robbed? Yes. Dew is still on the lawn at 845 that morning as Kelly Jarka returns from a neighborhood coffee shop to find what he says are all the signs of a burglary gone wrong. I could hear the baby was crying, so I yelled out to Isabel, you know, uh, Isabel, you know, what's wrong with the baby? And, uh, and then as I proceeded up the stairs, I found her. So you go up to the top landing, that's where your master bedroom is? Uh -huh. And what do you see there? It's where I found the, I Isabel lying on the, on the landing by the bedroom. Okay, was somebody there that held you at gunpoint, or were you burglarized? I was, I was not there. You weren't there? No. Okay, so your house has been burglarized. Yes. But as you were about to hear, 30 seconds into that 911 call, Kelly Jarka reveals one more detail. I think my wife has been killed. A what, sir? I think my wife has been killed. Okay, what are you saying? I think my wife has been killed also in the burglary. She was home alone with me. Okay, do you see her? She's lying on the ground, there's blood underneath her. Okay, is she breathing? No. Is she bleeding? Yes. Is there anyone else in the house? No, my sister is my in-laws next door. What happened? I walked in the house. The baby was crying. I picked him up went up there to look for my wife. And the house has been, been everything's torn up. I tried to move her and, and uh, um, shake her and see if uh, she responded. Uh, she didn't. Did you talk to her at all? Yeah. What were you saying sure. to her? Mm -hmm. It's probably, it's probably okay. Kelly? Oh my God. Okay, Kelly, take a deep breath, okay? I have a lot of people on the way to see you, okay? Where's your baby? <laughs> Kelly, where's your baby? <laughs> the terrifying screams you hear are from Isabel's mother, Tina Canchola, who lives across the street from the Jarkins. Kelly runs to her house as he's talking to 911. Kelly, who's that in the background? It's my, my mother-in-law. And when I uh, got to the last uh, stair, I said, Isabel, sweetie, answer me. Can you hear me? Move if you hear me. And she couldn't. She was already there. But I, I didn't want to believe it. But she knows it's true and is already seething. The police order her down from the landing, and in the seconds it takes to walk down the stairs, Tina Canchola has made a snap decision about the murderer with no evidence. Right away, I, I figured that he would kill her. So what did you say to him? I say, you kill her. I know that you kill her. And he, of course, said, no, I didn't. Of course no, not. He didn't say nothing. He just looked at me like, like this. Why wouldn't he deny it? Because he knew that it was true. But why the rush to judgment? Is Tina just an angry mother-in-law who hates Kelly, and so she ignores all the evidence of a break-in? That's not the Kelly Jarka everyone else knew. A man so in love with his wife, he'd give her anything. This is their second anniversary party. We were young. She liked to uh, joke around. So in other words, next year. <laughs> so in other words, next year. Very kind, considerate person, happy. Of course, I thought she was beautiful. 
For Kelly, it is love at first sight, a Midwestern boy smitten by a California girl he met at church. Kelly was like always pursuing Isabel. <laughs> he, he was trying everything. Isabel's family says she likes being pursued. His family saw that too. Every time Isabel said, Kelly, I need this, or I want that, he'd be like, okay, here, dear, here's the credit card. A bracelet. Nice going, Kelly, making us look bad, getting two presents for the wife, huh? He always put her first in his life. He truly, absolutely loved her to death. A devoted couple to each other and to their God, Jehovah's Witnesses, the 40-year-old Isabel, a stay-at-home mom who loved to shop and spent the rest of her time preaching door-to-door, -door, proud that her husband was made an elder in their congregation. We are very uh, dedicated uh, to God. Uh, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek the kingdom first and all the other things will be added to you. And uh, everything always works out. And things are working out. Nearly 20 years of marriage. The Jarka family lives well on Kelly's salary as a contractor. Their brand new house in one of the safest communities in America could be considered a perfect target for burglars. It's filled with the best of appliances. In the garage, two luxury SUVs and a pickup truck for work. And in a nearby marina, a 36-foot powerboat for weekends. Until on that spring morning, Kelly walks in on tragedy. It's obvious her head was on the pillow that she had to have been asleep when this happened. It's a vicious killing. Crime scene photos show what looks to lead detective Danny Martin like a crime of passion. Isabel Jarka was bludgeoned to death with 11 blows to the face and head. Overkill. It doesn't look like she was able to defend herself from the initial blow. And then it looks like she tried to crawl away from the assault and she was repeatedly uh, being struck in the head uh, with a blunt force object. And uh, when she got to the hallway, she just couldn't fight anymore. And uh, the blows became so severe that she, she just collapsed. And since 30% of all women murdered are killed by their husbands or boyfriends, police are already thinking the mother-in-law may be right. He's not crying. He's not emotional in any way. He seemed very cold and just emotionless. 